Hey folks, so tonight we're gonna be taking another look at my uh, trusty iPod here. And uh, quite frankly, I haven't been using it nearly as much as I was uh, last time when I placed the video or the uh, battery in it. And uh, well, had I been using it as much as I am now, I probably wouldn't have set out on this journey. But well, here we are. Um, imagine the scenario. This is the only way to listen to music on your commute. The battery dies. You're too much of a moron to pack a charging cable. And this thing only has that Apple 30 pin connector. Um, now, 2004, 2005 was a much different uh, landscape back then as far as charging connectors go. And Apple, it wasn't really standard back then either, but it was popular enough that you could probably find one just about anywhere you went. Um, that's that's not true today. Uh, if anyone, you know, any of your coworkers, friends has an Apple cable, chances are pretty good it's a lightning connector, not a 30 pin. Uh, so I'm thinking instead of taking the easy solution and just packing a 30 pin in my uh, in my kit, throwing one in my car, um, let's put a USB C port in it. So I went ahead and got these custom PCBs made up. Uh, I'm thinking. We should be good. It's just USB-C port and then the uh, four lines that I care about pinned out and then on the bottom we have space for some resistors to maintain uh, USB host, USB-C host compatibility. So let's see if we can't get this working. All right, so before we even tear into this iPod, let's get this thing assembled. We need two things for this. USB type C port. Now I did design this for a specific port. Uh, I believe I got these from L yeah, lcsc.com. Um, here's the part number. You can find that, find it on their site by searching type dash C dash 31 dash M dash 12. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description, but that doesn't always happen. But just need that and if you plan on plugging into USB Type-C hosts, you'll need a couple 5.1K resistors. Uh, otherwise, just four wires to hook it up, and that should be it. Now, where are... I thought I had... Yeah, here they are. Sorry. Misplaced my flush cutters. And let me grab some tweezers. So I already did have some tweezers, but I like the uh, angled ones better. I don't know why I have the other ones on my desk. Okay. Let's just get the uh, get these open here. And it should just be as simple as soldering that on there. Let's see if I can do this with, uh, with my camera that close. Where's my solder even now? Oh, there it is. Get some delicious flux in there. <gasps> I'm out of flux. I swear this doesn't usually happen to me. And there's a little bit left in there. Maybe I can get it working. Yeah. I think we're good for this video. We'll have to refill that.
I'm just trying to inspect that. I think pretty much all of those are shorted together. So that's nice. There's entirely too much solder on there. looking better but there's still a nice big old blob in the middle there Where did all this solder come from? Oh, there we go. That looks good. Let's take another peek here. I think there are still two that are shorted, but I'll check with the multimeter. Otherwise, that looks good. So I somehow managed to misplace a multimeter in my small 500 square foot apartment. Don't ask me, I don't know. But I went to grab another one out of my stash and found this thing. Turns out they do make that cheap multimeter I have, not just with a backlight, but with a uh, beeper for continuity. So that's nice. So the pins I am suspicious of is that one and that one. And they are not shorted, so that's nice. Let's test that. That's good. That's supposed to be shorted. That's good. That's supposed to be shorted. That's good. That's good. And let's check these two. Excellent. So I think we're good. Let's get the bottom pins now. So there is actually a spot to solder this fourth pin, but I'm not sure how well it's going to hold on. So I'm not sure it really matters, but do it anyway. All right. Let's tin that and that. I need to bring that up so you can see. This is going terribly. I'll clean up that crusty joint in just a second.
All right, there we go. Turn off the soldering iron for now. It's gonna be another few minutes before I need it again. All right, so now we gotta actually get the iPod ready. That's this bad boy, so still working perfectly fine. I did charge it up a little for this video, but not fully charged. Do need to go ahead and get it open here. Easiest way is generally with one of these spudgers here. It's my preference. Just gotta try and work it in there. Which I'm having a hard time with because there's like no gap. Oh, there we go. There we go. Once you get that in there, you can just slide it down. And flip it over. Unplug that. And unplug that. We'll set this aside. We'll need to modify that later. So here you can see, I've already been in here. I was testing my uh, one of my prototypes for fitment. And I forgot that was in there. I need a screwdriver. There it is. And I completely forget what size screw this is. Is it? No, it's not that. Looks like it is a Torx T6. Yep. And the intention is that this thing goes right here. We're going to have to cut off this clip. That's okay. We don't need all the clips. This will go right there. You should just be able to screw it down. We might need a little spacer underneath the PCB because of that flat flex connector right there. Yeah, otherwise it's crooked. Hmm, what can I use for a spacer? I think we just need... I was hoping these resistors would uh, serve as a spacer. That's not happening. And yes, I know four gigabytes is not a lot for an iPod. I have a very small collection. Deal with it. Hmm. No, it's not that simple, is it? Oh, no, that won't fit. <laughs> so I'm going to use a small part that broke off my PSP earlier, because that's what I have handy. That'll be perfect. Just a spacer so it can sit flat. Come on. There we go just so we can tighten the screw without having to tweak this whole port over. And I did make a little uh, part that pushes out so that when you're plugging into this port, it's not just like uh, levering on the screw, it's actually pushing against this clip for support. 
and I am so happy that that fits. Here's another PCB so you can see what's going on there. That's what this, this part is. All right, so now is the hard part. I need to connect wires to that. I'm gonna pull that off. So thankfully, the pitch on this isn't too terrible. And there's, quite frankly, probably a better place to solder to, but where at, I'm not sure. Okay, I found something that should make this pretty easy, uh, but it will, it's gonna involve a little bit of guess and check. Excuse me while my phone settles into its mount and slowly swings over into position. Uh, but I was working on a while back a keyboard, a split keyboard, a custom one that I was making. So you had your main 60% size keyboard and then it had a separate number pad that you can plug in but I was entirely too cheap to buy two controllers, so I was just going to have it have uh, like a, a dock style connector and then have the number pad have the equivalent connector on it and you just, you just plug it in and there you go. Um, the problem was the cords that I ordered, uh, this actually used to be connected at the end. I cut it down the middle and then as soon as I saw what they had done, I realized, well, that's not gonna work. I'd ordered a Apple 30 pin extension and I was under the impression that all of the pins would be connected, not just the USB pins would be connected because if I wanted a USB cable extension, I would have ordered a USB cable extension, uh, you know, with a USB A connector on it, not an Apple 30 pin connector on it, but anyway, that's going to be perfect for our needs because I can just plug this in here and I can check, hold one end of the meter onto the data. And that's up here. And then I can just run this along the back until I find pin 25 or 27 or whatever this is. All right, so right about as soon as I took the phone down, put it on the charger and um, started working at this, I realized I was making a really dumb mistake and that there was a way to make this much easier on myself. If you just look at the plug, you can see that there's only four pins in there. Uh, so yeah, I think I've got that figured out. I went ahead and used a chain of adapters to connect one of my probes to the end here and we can see if I put this on the fourth wire or the fourth pin it's a dead short so that's what we want that's what we'll wire up that should be the data plus wire which is going to be second right here um, I'm probably gonna end up making a revision of this and I guess I'll put those in the same order that they get soldered on uh, or opposite order that way none of the wires cross over Either way. All right, so new plan. Um, I think I ended up lifting one of the pads here, pin 29, but pin 29 and 30 are both ground and they're shorted to each other, so I'm not worried about it. I did already plug everything back in and check it. It is still working. I do still have USB, but new plan. I was hoping to avoid taking this apart, but that's clearly not happening. Um, I also filled up my flux bottle. But I'm thinking, since the traces don't go anywhere on this board, there's probably a bunch of EM filters and stuff and such on the other side of the board that we can just tap into. So I'm going to pull this apart and we're going to try the other side. I don't know how well this is going to come apart with this uh, compact flash adapter in here, but it's kind of stuck down to the battery, so... <clears throat> I 
I think it's within my best interest to unstick it. Or can I just unstick the battery? That'll work too. <laughs> yeah, sure, that works. Then I can unstick, or at least release, the screen ribbon. Or I could have just taken the whole screen out, but I kind of don't want to do that. Okay, we'll come back to that. Oh yes, that is much more promising. I bet I can solder to one of these pads or something instead. Let's try it out. that plug reconnect that and then just guess and check about whatever this is aha found it that is Component L12V, this top left pad is the um, data plus pin or pin 27. This top right pin is the same thing which means this is probably just a uh, filter of some sort. <clears throat> but we're going to turn on the soldering iron because I forgot to do that. And I bet that pin right next to it is just the other data pin, but I'm not going to check until I have this soldered down. Okay. Okay, and this goes to that, yep, and this was, I'm going to take that screw up before I lose it, this is going to end up going right here, I'm just going to flip this over again. PCB being shaped this way always freaked me out. Always felt like it was too delicate, too easy to flex. Don't want to break it, you know? Boom! There's one. Three more. Plug that back in. And now I'm going to put this on the white wire, which should be data minus, which I'm betting is this pin right here. Bingo. I'm gonna keep that light on because I can see better with it. even though the cost camera quality
Boom. No, I'm trying to get that with my bare fingers when I literally have tweezers in my hand. All right, check this out. If we plug this in, should be able to verify that on the white. Uh-oh. Oh, duh. That was kind of spooky. Ta-da! Oh, you can't even see that. Verify that on that. I'm going to double check by switching this back onto the green wire. Green wires go. Let's do, do the ground first. And this is going to be It's not that simple, is it? It is that simple. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't difficult at all. It's on uh, this side of the capacitor. Oh, let's tin that first. This big old juicy capacitor right here. And we should be able to verify this on black wire. Ta-da! Last one, red wire. This is so much easier. And is that going to be this capacitor? No, that would be too easy. No, it's right here. We're going to use this side of this big chunky capacitor here, and I am going to pause as soon as I finish getting the solder to take a picture so that I can uh, document this a little, little bit more clearly. Boom. Oh, did I forget to strip that side of the wire? I did. That's okay. I'll make it work. All right, I think we're done soldering. Let's flip this over one more time. So I can plug this in. We're going to double check this on the red. And bingo. We're good.
All right, I guess let's go ahead and put this back together. And I was hoping to not have to pull this out, because now I'm going to get dust in it and or fingerprints, or both, because of who I am as a person. You know, I'm going to go pause and get hit that with a quick blast of air. I'll be right back. All right. I'm feeling better about that. That goes in there. This goes like that. Goes like that. Plug this back in here. And let's go ahead and pop the screws in. Try it out. Try to get those in straight. Now, I have no idea how much extra room I have because my battery is not the proper size. But hopefully, if you're trying to follow along at home, there's enough room for you, too. That's about right. Let's try it out. Pop that in there. Put that in there. That's backwards. That goes like that. We ran it under the motherboard so we're not cheating. And what to do with the back here is. Because this thing is going to think it's locked, and I actually do want to test it. Get off lock. Got a backlight, I think. No, not yet. Hey, there it is. So let's see. Lift that up. And. USB port, I'm testing the uh, 30 pin here. Oh God, <laughs> my screw just came out. That can't be good. But uh, sorry, it's gonna be just off camera. USB device not recognized. That can't be good. All right, I figured out the error and quite frankly, when the 30 pin wasn't working anymore, that should have been a clue as to why it wasn't working. Uh, but there was a short along the back of the connector that I noticed when I um, when I double checked my wiring here I double checked and I triple checked 
and then of course I just looked at the back of the connector and it looked like I had a USB data line shorted to a FireWire data line and that was pretty much the extent of my problem. My wiring on the USB-C side of things seems to be working so I'm gonna go ahead and get this back together and we'll try it out one more time. Well actually no, we won't try it out because we still have to cut a hole for the actual port. I'm just making sure there's no dust in there. I'm so glad these things are already backlit. Not that I wouldn't be opposed to backlighting one, but just one less thing I feel obligated to do. Where are my tweezers? I lost my tweezers. Never mind. I set them aside just for myself. You know, that would be hilarious after all this time to break the uh, click wheel because this is the only fourth gen iPod I have. There we go. All right. So yeah, I should have just never touched that 30 pin connector in the first place. There is a another USB-C mod that someone else is working on. I don't know if they have a YouTube channel, but I, I saw it on Reddit. I was chatting with them for a little bit. Um, instead of uh, my implementation, which is putting it side by side, the uh, original port, they're just replacing the port entirely. Which means, you know, you don't have to cut any holes in your, uh, in your shell, but it also means that you're losing out on any of the extra functionality that comes with this dock port connector like um, FireWire. Oh no, big deal. Or um, like any of the, the docks, you know, it's a dock port. You can't dock it, there's no line out, stuff like that. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna need to get a longer screw for this. This is too short now. I'm going to go into my bag of tricks here. And that looks like a suitably long screw. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to compare the length. Here's the original. My new one looks to be just a wee bit longer, which should be the ticket. get a different bit and let's try it out oh that could be a problem the screw is bigger well thicker maybe maybe not well, it's definitely thicker. I don't know if it's going to be a problem. It's feeling pretty good, though. All right, I'm going to tuck those wires in. And then it's still plugged in.
that in. And if all goes as planned, I can't clip it together just yet, but it should still boot up. Oh no, what's going on? Oh no! Did I forget to solder it on? Alright, let's try 30 pin. Alright, that works. Let's see if it shows up in iTunes. Yes, it does. Okay. I'm gonna unplug that. We're gonna try USB C again. Oh no! It was working, why is it not working now? Oh, man, this is just, this is a mess, isn't it? Getting voltage. That much is certain. Or is it? Yeah, it is. I just can't plug in or connect that, rather. Hmm. And this is a mess. iPod still seems to work. Well, to cut down on how much video editing I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to pause this again, pull this apart and see what the hell. Um, I'm guessing one of my wires broke off. So, I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so... That was fun. I took it all apart. Turns out one of the, the wires had broken, uh, one of the data wires. So I just had to solder it back down and can't see it now because I've already put it all back together. But I just put a piece of tape down there to hold everything together. And I found an even slightly longer screw that uh, holds even better. It, it feels really solid now. Um, let me go ahead and plug it in. We're going to try the 30 pin first, make sure everything is still working. And I'm going to switch over to my video capture here. Da, 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 da. It says do not disconnect. And let's see if it pops up in iTunes. There's a problem with this device. I should scan it and fix it. But I don't care about that because it's showing up in iTunes. So now let's try. Set this down. I'm going to try USB type C. And, 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 come on. Yes! Yes! Look at that! Look at that! Oh, 
Oh, it's working. Okay. I'll worry about fixing that later. We'll unplug it for now. Okay, so now I stop that video capture because I really don't want it to go on all night. Um, can't really shut this down. So I guess we're just gonna lock it and remove that. And now it's still locked, so it's not gonna bug me. But now we need to uh, cut a hole. It's the fun part. So I haven't really put much thought into how I'm going to do this. Shocker, I know. But uh, let me find a Sharpie and we'll go from there. And the people who actually know what they're doing are probably cringing at this, but it's okay. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out together. All right, so I just marked the outer bounds of the USB Type-C port, and now I need to mark basically how high up it goes. when this is closed. And uh, that's terrible, but I think it's good enough to work with. Okay. So ideally, I should measure this, but Screw it, we're just gonna go for it. I think this is too hardcore for this. Oh no, that's working. This is just a punch tool to make it so when I get the drill out, it's not dancing around trying to find some holes to drill. I'm going to start off with whatever the hell drill bit's in here. And that's not blood, that's just red sharpie. The blood is still coming. Oops. That is precisely why we punched holes. I should put this in a vise. I'm not going to do that. Oh. That's going to be problematic. I forgot about... Those uh, spot welded um, rails. I don't think these are the right drill bits. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go find some better drill bits and uh, stick this in a vise so I don't hurt myself. Okay, yes, the vise was an excellent idea, and I'm really glad I did that. Uh, I drilled it out with that small bit first, and then I came back and finished it off with this uh, eighth inch bit here. Um, I think I went well over the mark. Just gonna set that down out of the way, but that's okay. Um, I think that's pretty much as good as it's gonna get. I need to remove this bracket here, or this rail. I really don't know how to do that without completely destroying it. Um, or I mean, because the uh, bezel is mounted to that too. I don't want to ruin that. Uh, but the intention was to back and file this whole thing with a round file and uh, finish this off that way. Um, so that's gonna take a while, but before, you know what? Before I do that, let's try getting that rail off. I'm going to use my formerly good flush cutters. 
and this is spot welded on. But I'm going to try. Mm, that's not going to work. I don't know how I'm going to get that out. I might need to try coming at it with the Dremel. Or hell, maybe I'll get lucky and I don't need to remove it at all. But either way, I'm going to stop while I file this because that's going to be a while. All right, I think we're finally in the uh, home stretch here. I got it all nice and filed out. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, still just Sharpie, not blood. Um, it's a little crooked, but that has more to do with my ability to file in a straight line than to uh, actually get the hole lined up. And I think it should be good. So that looks like it lines up pretty nicely. Um, so yeah, I guess let's go ahead and put it back together. Uh, if you're working with a fourth gen iPod and this cable comes out, no worries, just undo those two screws. It's a flat flex cable or flat flex connector on the uh, opposite side of the board and top goes up. But uh, don't, don't freak out. But I think we're gonna be good even with the uh, the rail in there. I think it should fit over it as long as we put that part in first. All right, why is it not fitting back together? I have to kind of angle it because of my uh, flash mod, I guess. No, I'm gonna have to take it apart and file it some more. So close. I missed, just barely. But uh, it does work. Let's see if uh, I can still plug it in. Nope, doesn't fit. I need to file it out a little bit more. Oh, <laughs> so close. That's what happens. I shouldn't have snapped it together. No, I'm just kidding. I, I suppose it wouldn't have worked if I didn't. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked anyway. Um, how did I get this last time? Start up here. Whatever, at least this isn't the sixth gen. Those things are a pain in the ass to take apart. I can't even get this stupid thing apart. Shove it in right here. Because for some reason I have a gap up here. I'm just going to go with it. Alright, fine. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause once again 
while I file just a little bit more to get that to fit. Just a little bit. It's so close. I got my markings just a little bit off. All right, I'll be back. Make sure you clean up all the metal filings because that's probably not something you want floating around on the inside of your pod. Oh, I think I went a little bit too far. That's okay. Get it around the rail. Eh, could be better. Not bad for my first try, though. Seems to still work. Let's try out a USB. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, it's working. Now, let's try something out here. Go into File Explorer here. Watch this. Just for proof that USB host mode is working, I'm going to plug one end of this cable to my Windows phone here. And the other end of this cable, right here, to this iPod. And we have the only time someone has ever tried plugging an iPod into a Windows phone. <laughs> I thought it would show up. It says it's doing something. Both sides are working. I was really hoping it would say there, Mako's iPod. Oops, that's not what I want. Habits, right? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. It's not terrible. I definitely could have done a better job, but I am very pleased with how that came out. That could have gone so much worse. And all that time I spent dealing with the, uh, oh, I just love how that clicks in. All that time I spent dealing with the uh, short on the 30 pin. If I just avoided using the 30 pin in the first place, I would have never had to deal with that, and this video would have been two hours shorter. Oh, it's so nice. Um, this is not going to charge any quicker. Uh, it's still limited by the charge hardware in the iPod itself. In fact, it might be even more picky about um, external wall bricks that you use. Thankfully, I pretty much exclusively charge it by USB, so by just plugging it into my computer, so it's probably not going to be an issue. Um, but yeah, this is, this is brilliant. I have no idea if this PCB is going to work on the color iPod 4th gen, the iPod photo, uh, or even on the, um, on the 5th gen on the video here. But, I mean, electrically, it'll, it should be fine. Uh, there's another gentleman working on a USB Type-C mod. I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, but theirs replaces the 30-pin uh, dock port. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep this intact so that I could still use 
if I ever have to dock my iPod, which, quite frankly, I probably won't. But, you know, I like having the option. So, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night. I'm going to go put this on a shelf and never use it again, because that's just how I roll, apparently. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.